great. Marcella, Sherry, Deanna, good. I'm glad you could all hear me. I'm excited to get going. We are still on week two of our heart-based practices. The last three days, we've been doing loving-kindness-based practices. Um, started with ourselves, then we sent it outwardly. And then yesterday, we did ourselves and outwardly, but without the phrases, we just did the visual images. Um, so we're getting a hefty dose of, of one, loving-kindness, but also um, just what it means to cultivate these heart qualities that are often talked about in meditation traditions. Today we're going to come back to some of the practices we did last week, like basic awareness of breath, sound, or attunement to our bodies. But we're going to try to infuse uh, a quality of loving kindness into our awareness. And I'll guide you through what, what that will look like, what that will feel like. Um, but just want you to have the, the broad map going into it. All right, so let's get started. You can find a, a comfortable posture. As always, this you have a lot of freedom uh, with what posture you choose. Could be sitting, could be standing, could be lying down, whatever works. If it feels okay to do so, you can close your eyes. And we're going to start this session with the bells, but instead of just ringing them once, I'll ring them multiple times, potentially up to five. And each time I ring them, see if you can listen to the sound with your heart. I know that can be a weird thing to hear or even understand how to do. We are all going to have our own felt sense of what that means, and that's what we're trying to connect with. What does it mean to tune into the sound of the bell with heartful awareness? Let's take a deep breath together, in through the nose, slowly out through the mouth. Inviting the jaw to soften and any muscles in the face that might be tense. Inviting the shoulders to be at ease as well as the hands and the belly.
as the body starts to settle, we let the breath settle back into its natural rhythm. And we'll take a few moments to simply experience what it's like to be still. What would it look like to be in this stillness with a loving presence? Even when we think we're not caught in an emotion or we feel neutral or we're just very still, there's almost always an attitude to our awareness. It could be gratitude impatience, subtle boredom, skepticism. And so what we're practicing is just simply allowing that, that attitude of awareness to be, to be more closely connected to loving kindness, acceptance, embrace, You can practice bringing those qualities just to yourself. Stillness is one of the places where we get most connected to ourselves, which is why it can be scary. We're no longer running or distracting. So as I'm doing this, I would just simply say, oh, hey, Corey. Good to see you today. How are you doing? And not a great night of sleep. Yeah, I know that's rough. You're doing well. We'll get through it today. And so whatever the felt sense of you is right now, first notice the relationship to that felt sense of you. Is it antagonistic, oppositional, embracing? And just see if you can be with it and welcome it and tend to it with this loving kindness. It might be with words or it might be with a more silent mind.
And let's guide our awareness to sounds, anything that you can perceive moving through your field of awareness. And again, we're relating to this sensory experience of hearing with the quality of loving kindness. That can take a lot of different shapes and forms. So you get to figure it out for yourself. But it, it sometimes for me feels like relating to the sound as if it were like a, a being. Now, hello sound. Oh, thank you for coming through. It's nice to hear you and just this soft appreciation for hearing. The gift of getting to experience that moment. Sound is not doing anything to distract you. It's not even doing anything in particular to make you happy. It's just an experience. So we get to choose how to relate to it. So let's shift the awareness now to observing thoughts moving through the mind. Again, if we have a very active mind or sometimes negative thoughts moving through the mind, it can be tough to bring a kind relationship to the mind. We tend to try to crush it into submission control it. So here you get to step back, watch all the ways that the mind is thinking, regardless of what it's thinking about, how weird it is, negative, positive, doesn't matter. We're, we're relating to the experience of the thought. And each time a thought arises, we get to appreciate and send loving kindness to our brain that can think. The miracle of being able to think. You could say, well, thank you, thought. You're doing such a good job. Thanks for, thanks for showing up. I appreciate you. Or you can just watch them with an awareness that is smiling.
And lastly, let's turn our attention to the fact that we're breathing, that you're breathing. And as you feel the body breathing, this very simple, basic experience, just trying to infuse that awareness with kindness, love, appreciation. There are so many ways we could focus on the breath, annoyance, feeling being bored, skeptical that this is weird. Just what's it like to try focusing on it with love, appreciation, final few moments of this meditation, you can set an intention that you'd like to carry with you throughout the day. ready, reorient yourself and eventually allow the eyes to open again. Good job, everyone. Um, feel free to share a little bit how, how that was for you in the comments. Um, always great to hear what the experience was like. Uh, I'll talk just a little bit about the practice and some things related to loving kindness before we go. Um, the, the first is, you know, when you're focusing on the breath in the way that we did with that, that loving awareness, um, we want to also carry over that continuity of loving awareness into the thoughts as well. So this is this can easily happen with any meditation where it's like whatever we're focusing on, we feel like we're doing it good then. It's like, okay, I'm with the breath, with the breath. And then the thought comes up and it feels like an enemy to the practice that we're, we're trying to do, the enemy to the right thing. 
And it's very important in those moments to hold the same quality of, of equanimity, balance, compassion, loving kindness to the thoughts. So that there's like this grace versus inhale, exhale, inhale, thought, uh, bring it back, right? Inhale, exhale, there goes the mind, hi thought, thank you thought, back to the breath, hi breath, thank you breath. It's not so much about being able to sustain the attention on the breath. It's about being able to sustain that attitude of awareness wherever the mind goes and whatever experience arises in the mind. There's not going to be any circumstance in your life where there's just one single experience. So if, you're, if your peace is contingent upon the mind being fixed on something or your, your love and ability to express your heart is contingent upon there being no distraction, that's, uh, it's not a good recipe for anything sustainable. So it's very important to just look at it practically. Like what is the quality I'm trying to cultivate in the moments where it might be easy and then where it gets hard and, and move with grace in how you uh, bring that quality of loving kindness to those moments. The other thing I'll, I'll say, uh, just based on some comments I heard yesterday, is that sometimes the loving kindness, uh, this, these practices, heart-based practices can move a lot of energy. And what that means is just emotions can get released, um, even traumas, uh, things that have been unresolved, things that have been suppressed, repressed. And so it's not uncommon to feel um, very sad, sometimes angry, um, and sometimes crying a lot by doing something that feels like it should cultivate positive emotions. I'm sending love to other people, but it shows us how inextricable those emotions are, how, how deeply woven into the same fabric they are of, of great joy and great sadness and sorrow. And usually what happens in life when we have the experiences of, of sorrow and pain, they feel like too much to hold. So we, we push them away. We, we don't let ourselves feel them fully. And part of being able to reconnect to deep joy means opening up parts of us that allow us to feel the full range of experience. And sometimes like what's underneath that lid is a lot of unresolved sadness, pain, grief. So even though it might feel like, oh, I must be doing this wrong or the meditation isn't working, that's not the case at all. Uh, you're, you're moving toward a fuller integration of yourself and allowing this, these emotions, these thoughts, the fullness of you to start to re-express and to reintegrate. In the beginning, it can feel a little jarring because it's like, whoa, opened up that. There's a lot there, but it will start to pass. It will start to settle. And then there's this soft coziness that we, we begin to experience and also get access to joy, gratitude, um, love that that's just not accessible when we're stuffing everything else uh, down so i hope that makes some sense i hope you can keep it in your mind as you're going through these practices especially if they feel uncomfortable at any point uh, it's been great being with you over these last 11 days so we are now officially halfway through um so thank you, and, and it's not over yet. We have 10 more days. We'll have three more days of heart-based practices. Remember, these are on YouTube, uh, so you can rewatch them. You could also watch them on Facebook and follow along there. If you have friends, family that you think might be interested, feel free to tag them, share the links with them so we could get all of this out there more. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you tomorrow, and until then, take care.